Alright, in this tutorial, this is the um, third part of um, Java RESTful web service tutorial. We will show how to create um, a facade based web service and how to send an object using JSON to the client. So for this person uh, purpose I have created a person class here actually, it's an entity inside a, a web application project. So this person entity has a very simple content. We have an um, ID which is auto incremental. Then we have a name and age. The idea of this application is that the web service of course allows the client to create new persons, delete persons, find persons and update persons as per normal database operations. And it will also allow us to or allow the client to get a random person, hence the name random person app. So this um, entity will be used as data. So the idea is that the random method of this web person app, uh, random person app will return a random person object to the client. And because we cannot really send a Java object, we will send it as uh, JSON. And you can do that automatically with the web service. So given this person entity, let's make a new web service from entity. So there is a wizard for that. So we can right click new. Um, I have it actually here, web services from entity classes. But since you probably don't have it here for the first time, we go to other, we go to web services and we select here this restful web services from entity classes. And after selecting this, we can select to uh, which entity we want to use. If you have more than one, of course, you can select. And this wizard, we actually create a new facade. It will create also abstract facade. And then it will change that facade so that it will be actually a web service. It will add some annotations there. So let's select the person, click next. And you can change here the package name. I use the services and finish. Now you can see that we have now services package here with abstract facade and person facade rest. Um, and by the way, if you don't know how to create these entities and facades, you should have a look at the Ubilife Labs tutorial number two, you know, number three. It's a, a tutorial about creating entity and facade. But for now, we are not going to cover that. That's another tutorial. So now we only use this entity. And the facade that was created is called person facade rest. And if we open that, you can see that there is a path data.person. Okay, that sounds a little bit weird. So let's just call the path person. And then this person path has different methods. We have a post method, we have a put method, delete method, get method. You see all of them are here. Some of them have different paths also. Like for example, uh, if we load this path on the web, web browser and uh, use an ID number, this is the person's ID number. You remember this is the path parameter. We can use any number here and that number will be inserted here. Uh, these methods, all of them consume XML and JSON and some of them like this get produces also XML and JSON. So these are the basic data types that are used. So it depends on what the client wants. If the client requests XML, this object will be returned as XML. If the client requests JSON, then this will be returned as JSON. It's pretty cool. And there are also other typical facade methods like find all find range, count rest. So all these are basically just calling the abstract facade method. So you can see we're calling super create, super edit, super remove. So nothing fancy here. Now we will add a new method here for returning a random person. So we can call it public person get random person. Again, the method name doesn't matter because we will be calling it through a web service. So only thing that matters is the path. 
This will be a get method. It uses the get request and the path we can say it random. So when we call this one on a web browser, we add random at the end of the person. So person endpoint slash random. And this one we can add it um, we can produce not path produces so we can write either application JSON or we can use the media type format. So we can call media type um, application JSON. Leave it like that. Yes. So you can use either constant or the string. Okay. We don't need any parameters. We just return a random string. Uh, random string, random object in um, JSON string. So first we get all the persons. We have a list of persons that we get it from find all. This will return all of them. And then after we have all the persons, we can check if persons equals null or persons size is zero then it means that there are no persons in the database which means we can throw a new web application exception it's a special exception that appears on the web browser as a for example a http error code so we can use 404 which is the not found resource not found error in HTTP. You can also use other other codes here. And then, if there are more persons available, we get uh, a new random index. We get the seed value from the current milliseconds, and then randomize next integer. Okay, I think we have to import the random first, right? Next int and the bound will be person's size. So we get an integer between zero and person size minus one. And that's the random index. And then we return persons and get an index. So we return a random person from this person's list. Right, so that's pretty much it. You see, we don't convert anything to JSON here. Everything is done automatically by the container. We just specify here what MIME type we want to produce. And then when we return the object, it will be converted to JSON automatically. It's pretty neat. And now, um, in order to test this one, of course, we can load it with the browser. So let's deploy it. And we can test this HTTP method. We can test the random person. OK, there is some problem. Let's see uh, what it is. OK, you see HTTP 404 not found. You see, the, the, it actually works perfectly. We throw a new exception. It's not found because there are no persons in the database. So how to add things to the database? We should actually call uh, create method first. So in order to do that, I have actually prepared here a, a desktop client. This one uses Apache HTTP client library to send post and get requests to a web service. And this um, desktop client here, it's a normal Java application. It also has the person.java, so we can actually convert from JSON to, X, uh, to, to Java object. So we need the same identical person class here with the ID, name, and age. And then um, here, the desktop client, yes, we use this Apache library. Uh, this I'm not going to explain how to use it. It's a topic for another tutorial. But you can see here is the path that we will use. Okay, this was the old one. 
uh, random person app web resources person random this is the get path that we will test and post path is for sending data so this facade here the create is doesn't have any post uh, path argument uh, path parameter here so we just use this one person so when we call this one using the post method we actually call this create method okay so this one has start method that creates a new person and then testing the post the test post method is sending a new um, ob well, it will send basically it will send the person object as JSON string to the web service without going too much into details uh, this line here will actually execute the post request and we use the JSON as the content type so we send JSON to the web service um, and this line here we have a method that converts person to JSON so string data will be result and then we have the test, test get method which is called after that so afterwards we we call uh, accept uh, we accept JSON and then we execute the get request and we get um, a string as a result which is a JSON representation of the person object so we convert that string into a person object and these methods here do the conversion we use the Google's JSON library which is very very easy to use just one line of code you can convert from JSON to a class or from class to JSON. It's, it's very, very simple. Okay, but uh, I can run this one. And after running this one, the server hopefully will have a new person called John Doe. Perhaps we can add another one, Jane Doe. And let's add also Charles Doe. So we have an entire family of Doe's. So a child of course we need to have different objects and we send all of them to the server creating them all and then we get a random person from there so let's execute this application we'll see what happens uh, run okay request in successfully three times and it received a random person chain though okay now we can try to run it on the website so we can test this random person app web method so we can go here http methods and get random person test now you can see we get json this is json string if we reload it we get okay chain doe again now we get charles doe chain doe charles doe well we should have the john there too here it is so this is how it works. We can very easily send JSON, XML, whatever. We can send it back to the client. So that's all for now. Um, well, perhaps I, I show one more thing. We can also, instead of uh, using JSON, we could have here application XML returned by the get random person. Now let's see what happens. Reload okay for no not found so when i deployed it again uh database was empty because of, i was using the drop and create uh, table generation strategy so let's start the client application again that will create those three random persons and now if we load the website you see now it's xml so it's very easy we can send easily XML, JSON, or both, depending on what the client needs. And this conversion is done automatically. It uses the class name and the field names as the tag values here. All right, well, that was the uh, end of this tutorial. I hope it was useful. And well, if you have any comments, please add them to the YouTube video.